Well, I've been before the boards of selectmen, many boards of selectmen, to talk about waste collection uh, over the years. Uh, in February, I will be uh, celebrating 40 years in the solid waste management business. And uh, I've done six recycling plans. I've done, I ran the first office paper, white paper recycling program uh, back in the 70s. Uh, I've been on landfills all over the U.S. I've been in solid waste operations all over the world. And I think this is one subject that I have some fairly sound advice. I'm a little disappointed, therefore, that not a bit of it has been taken into account in these discussions that have come up. So I'm going to try one more time to put a couple of the features before you and hope you'll consider them. Um, you're trying to reach equal treatment between commercial and residential interests. And I think that's very important that you, try, that you are able to do so. Nobody should be paying for services they don't get, and they shouldn't be paying, uh, not paying for services that they don't get. And we've got all kinds of combinations here in town, as you all well know. Um, the problem, the basic problem is it can't be done with the present system. <clears throat> as long as you have the cost of solid waste collection buried in the tax base, you cannot reach equality. There is no way to do it because taxation is based on property value. And property value doesn't equate with the amount of trash somebody disposes of. It's all over the map on that. So uh, the only thing that you can keep track of under the present system that we have here is the number of trucks you have on the road, the number of people you have in that effort. <coughs> Beyond that, you can't, you can't drill down any deeper uh, on that. And I know that you want to, and I know that it should be done. So I've got a suggestion for you. And, and this is, as I say, it's based on a lot of observations, a lot of discussions over many, many years. Um, when I've talked about solid waste before, people think that the way we do it here in Hampton is the way the world does it. We're in the 1%. The way we do it, 1% of the world, of the, of the U.S., does it this way. Everybody else bills their customers. This, the only place it's done is in small rural communities, and I'm sure that, that was good here 30, 40 years ago, and that's the way it grew, and it just kept going that way. It was a little easier to kick the can down the road. Well, now you're coming close to a crisis, and you're running out of road, so you're going to have to make a decision. So I'd suggest this. First of all, remove the entire solid waste collection effort out of the tax base and give everybody a proportional rebate or a reduction in their taxes, no matter who. Then everybody is on an equal slate. You've wiped everything clean. Now we're starting fresh. What you do is the same thing you're doing now, but you build them. And you build them for what they dispose of, not how big a house they are in, or whether they're a commercial business or a small business or a big business or anything else, or whether they've got somebody else collecting it or anything else. You end up with three options. A property owner, commercial or residential, has got three options. They can either have the town collect it, and the town will build them, or they can have a commercial entity collect it, and the commercial entity will build them, or they can take it to the transfer station themselves for free. The town would still keep doing all of the, of the, of the uh, recycling. That is quick, easy, green cans uh, with the automatic loaders, bingo, and there is a revenue stream in there that offsets that. And so you can do that. You know what that, what that is, and usually you can make a buck or two on that, hopefully. But on all of the others, you need to be able to find out uh, and, and allocate if somebody's throwing away 50 pounds of trash a week, you ought to be able to bill them for 50 pounds. If they're throwing away 500 pounds, you ought to be billing them for that because it costs you more to do it. You can't do it when it's hidden in the tax base. So uh, some people are talking about bag and tag. A bag and tag doesn't really, if we were a totally residential community with very few businesses, bag and tag might work. But as I did once in a dog and pony show, some of you might have remembered when I had brought in the bag, I had two paper bags, and one of them was filled with nails, and another one was filled with feathers. And I said, okay, they bought both of these bags for the same amount of money. This one, I put the feathers down, that's okay. But the other one, clunk, we pay a heck of a lot more because we pay for it by the ton, by the pound. And when you try to equate volume or weight, People are going to take advantage of that, and the town's going to lose money because they're going to cram 500 pounds into a 40-pound bag if they can, and they're certainly going to try to do it. And then the town ends up on the short end of the stick. 
nobody should end up on the short end, whether it be the town, the, the businesses, the residential uh, uh, customers, or what have you. So there, there are a couple of concerns that have been um, uh, brought up on this. One oh, we'll have haulers all over the place. No, I don't really think so. The town's got a couple of options. First of all, there are only so many uh, commercial haulers who have the capacity to pick up a whole truck full and make it cost effective to do so. You can't have a bunch of people in pickup trucks. It ain't going to work. They're not going to make a buck on this, and they're, they're, you're not going to have a dozen of those. Casella, waste management, there are a few others that maybe uh, serve other areas. And the town can control those by designating the days in which they can go to certain areas in town. And so they can be under placed under enough restrictions to control it and not make it inconvenient for the, uh, the, the, the towns, townsfolk. Uh, Fred, just so you know, we have a five-minute limit on public comment, which is kind of loosely enforced. So I'm just about there. Okay. I'm just about there. <laughs> um, but, but, and so I mentioned bag and tag. The too many haulers, I think, is kind of a scare tactic that's used by some people. Uh, I would say that if you will consider this, you've already got the database. It's in the property tax records. You've got, and for, you can put in a system for not too many dollars. You'll have better cost control. You'll have better use of the automatic trucks, which is one man, no workers' comp risk, or very little, as opposed to a rear loader that's got three people and a lot of workers' comp risk. So you can control that a lot better by doing only the recycling and some uh, trash. And you only charge for the services that are actually rendered. I think that you can get a better co a handle on the control. I think that you can uh, uh, get better provide better service and for the restaurants and so forth that are already already getting somebody to do it commercially for them, let them keep doing it. But they don't have to do that and pay their taxes, that portion of their taxes too. This way would be a lot fairer. So please consider taking the entire solid waste collection operation out of the tax base and set up individual charges. Northampton does it that way. Other towns do it. There are neighbors that do it that way and it's not that difficult for them. So please consider it. I think it will be much more cost-effective for the town. It will be fair to everyone, mm -hmm. and we don't have people bragging about whether they do or don't get the service that they're paying. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Thank you.